Hello and welcome to <laughs> my video about time um, by popular demand. You demanded it and now it is here. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is basically a quick summary of how time works in our programs, how time passes in our programs and how our programs relate to it. Okay, uh, And I'm going to do that by just stepping through kind of five elements of how time works. Um, now that we've seen all of the different um, components of this, we can kind of put them together and understand how um, our programs run. So, to do this, uh, as per usual, I am going to write a program. Because we're talking about how different parts of a program react to time, I'm going to start with nothing. So we can see uh, nothing in my program, and I'm going to build it up. So, the first kind of time that I want to look at is what I'm calling JavaScript time. That is not an official term. Um, but JavaScript time, we can imagine, is that the way that we can imagine it is that as soon as our script.js file, which is what we're looking at right now, as soon as it loads in the browser, JavaScript is going to run any code um, that is outside the usual functions that we've been using, right? And for us, that mostly just means that it's going to run um, our variable declarations. So if I put in a variable declaration, uh, in this case it's going to be a clown. That clown is going to have a position and uh, it can have a size and it's going to have an image. Um, it's going to be displayed as an image, but obviously since I haven't loaded that image yet, I can't put anything here yet. Um, so I'm just going to explicitly say that it's undefined, okay, and a semicolon there. So this is the first part of time. When I just have this variable declaration, as soon as the script is loaded um, into the browser, JavaScript is going to start running. And it's going to see this variable declaration, and it's going to make this variable. It's going to exist right as soon as um, this file is loaded, before anything else happens, Okay, before P5 um, has even kind of started, if you like. Um, and this is actually the reason why we can't use p5 variables up here. So it's tempting, for example, if I want to center this clown, we might like to be able to say something like width over 2, height over 2 here, but we can't do that because p5 basically doesn't exist yet, um, because we're at the very, very beginning of our program before p5 in JavaScript time, um, that kind of initial moment where JavaScript starts working. Uh, so width and height don't exist yet, um, because p5 doesn't exist yet. So that is why uh, we can't use special p5 variables up here. Um, we're not there yet in time. Okay, so back to this. So that's the first kind of time. Um, the code that we have that is outside the p5 functions or our other functions as we, as we start writing them is executed right away, right at the very, very beginning of loading the script file. Um, okay. Generally for us, I should say, that's going to be variable declarations, right? So it's not something that's going to really do anything. It's just making our, our various variables come into, come into existence to be ready for the program when it really runs. The second uh, part of time in a P5 program, and for, for the rest of this I'm going to be talking kind of specifically about P5, is the preload function. Um, and currently we know about that in connection with loading images, right? So I'm going to load um, an image into my clown's image property by saying load image. Uh, and I know that I happen to have a clown image in my template project here. So assets slash images slash clown.png is uh, the image I want to load. And this preload function is the first thing that P5 uh, is going to automatically call for us. Uh, it calls it before setup, before draw, before anything else. Uh, it's going to call this preload function and it's going to do whatever is inside the preload function. And the preload function is special uh, because uh, you can see it's got this one instruction in here, load image, uh, to load up my, my image. And the special thing about preload is that it doesn't finish until all of the stuff inside it is completely done, right? Because loading an image takes time. Um, the computer has to literally download it from uh, the website. That takes an amount of time. Um, especially if it's a big file, and preload won't let the program keep going until that file is fully downloaded. That's why this is a useful function, is that it means that we know that our program is not going to start without the clown image being loaded. Um, and if you look at the, um, the, the script, uh, if you look at this program running in your browser, while the preload function is in control, you'll see the word loading with dot 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 after it. Um, 
displayed up there, that's P5 telling you that the preload function is currently doing stuff. And so that's the time that kind of exists before your program starts when you're loading various things. Um, lots of programs don't necessarily load images, in which case you won't have a preload function, uh, in which case this step will just be skipped. Okay, so that's preload. The next thing that happens, and now we're getting more to things that we know very well, the next thing that happens is the setup function. So the setup function is called as soon as preload ends, uh, or just as soon as P5 is loaded um, after the script is loaded. And in here we do our setup things, right? And the kind of relationship to time here, other than when it happens, immediately after preload or immediately after the script loads and all of this stuff has happened, all of the JavaScript time stuff has happened, uh, we know that the setup function is called exactly once right at the beginning. It's never called again automatically after that. Um, so it's just going to happen once, so it does all of the sorts of things that you might want to do once at the beginning of a program. Uh, that's why it's called setup. Okay. The next function, and the sort of the big time function, if you like, um, is the function called draw. Draw is called, uh, as we know, 60 times per second. Now that's the frame rate of our program. We can change the frame rate of our program. Um, and draw will just run over and over and over again. It's sort of the one function that we have so far that's kind of got this behavior where it keeps happening over and over and over again. So whatever we do in here is going to be done once per frame. So I could set the background to black. I could position uh, my clown at the mouse location. And I could display my clown uh, on the screen at clown.x, clown.y. Um, I gave it a size, so I'm going to use clown.size because I'm going to use that to illustrate something else in a second. So clown.size by clown.size. It's a square image, so that won't um, distort it. So I'm telling the image to be 100 by 100, right? Uh, because that's what the size is uh, up here at the top of the script. So these sort of three ideas, I guess, are going to be executed, run every uh, 1 60th of a second, 60 times per second. So it's going to set the background to black. It's going to position the clown. It's going to set its properties to be at the same location as the mouse. And then it's going to display an image at that location um, and at the clown's size. So those three steps, those three ideas, every frame that's happening. Um, and if we go and look at that over in our browser, oh, and I think there's one other thing I will want to do just for, so that it looks nice, is I'll set the image mode to center so the clown is centered on uh, the, the mouse cursor. So if I go and look, uh, oh, sorry, wrong place. Go and take a look at that. We have now this behavior, right? Because time now exists, because the draw is happening over and over again. Um, that image is being rendered onto the screen at the location of the mouse 60 times per second. And that means that if I move the mouse, because that's something that takes place in time, the image is locked onto where my mouse is. It follows it around. And this is really the, the big idea of kind of continuous time in our program. This is how we can do things that happen over time, that kind of um, continuously happen over time, like the position uh, of my, my clown face uh, changing over time. Um, and this is how we get a lot of those sorts of, you know, the real-time um, experiences, the real-time interactivity uh, where things happen um, over time like this. Okay, so back to draw. So that is one of the most important functions, of course, that we use in P5. That's how we get things to happen over time. Um, so that's a big one. The final thing uh, that we also know uh, that relates to time is the idea of events. And so let's use uh, and one more function, the mouse pressed function. And when the mouse is pressed, let's make the clown uh, get bigger. So clown size equals clown size plus uh, 50. So event functions, they're not called all the time. Uh, and they're not called um, like once at the beginning, like setup or preload. Uh, they're just called when the event in question happens, right? That's a very, very specific kind of relationship to time. These functions are called at the moment that the event occurs. So at the moment that I press down on my mouse, we will see clown size get bigger by 50. Let's go and check what that looks like. So the draw function is running over and over and over again, 60 times per second. That's why the clown is moving. And if I click, click, then that mouse pressed function is called at the moment that I press down on the mouse and it runs the code inside it and we see the clown get bigger. Click, 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 right? So it's responsive at that exact instant. So it's a very different idea about time. It's the idea that there are functions that can run 
at the moment that a specific event occurs that we want to respond to with our program. Click, 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 click. Terrifying. Um, and that is really, um, that is really the, ent the entire thing. Those are the five kinds of time in our program, okay? We've got code that's outside all of our functions, like let clown, uh, our declaration of the clown variable. That's going to happen as soon as the file loads. That's the very first thing that's going to happen. I've been calling this JavaScript time, right? It's right at the beginning it executes. Um, there's the preload function. That happens as soon as p5 uh, is ready to go, which is very, very quickly after the file is loaded, uh, but it is after these variable declarations um, occur. And preload, we know, is used to load files uh, of various kinds, and preload will freeze the program. It won't let anything move forward until those files are loaded, until everything in there is completed. Uh, once it is completed, uh, we get to setup. That runs one time right at the beginning of our program. We use it to set uh, the initial conditions of our program. Uh, often that's mostly to create a canvas, maybe set a few drawing uh, configuration things. Uh, and then once setup has run and it's finished, we see the draw function run over and over again, 60 times per second. That's how we get the idea of continuous time in our program, the idea that time is moving forwards uh, at a continuous rate, um, which it is at the frame rate of our program. That's why the mouse uh, is able to control the clown, if you like, is because the clown is setting its position, we're setting the clown's position, I should say, to the mouse location every frame, and that ends up being that the clown follows the mouse. And then finally, we have event functions, and these functions, like mouse press, are called at the moment that that event happens. So it's unpredictable, right, because the user is the person who presses the mouse. We don't know when it's going to happen. Um, they might not press the mouse at all, in which case this function is never called. They might keep clicking it uh, furiously all the time, in which case this is going to be called a lot. Um, we don't know. And so these functions are only called when the event takes place, uh, which is a very powerful idea as well. Uh, it's another form of interactivity um, that we can think about. So that's it. Those are all of the different relationships to time uh, that I can think of to tell you about. Uh, five of them. It's a good idea to get comfortable with these conceptually and just to know when things are going to happen. Um, so I will see you in the next video. Hope that you enjoyed time.